Now I'm used to being online, so I went ahead and created another slide deck with the hope that you will be able to use this moving forward. I will give you access to the slide deck. You will be able to write on it as you want. I realize it's very hard to follow the mouse when you're staring at the screen. So, being in person always takes a little readjustment. So while I clean that up, I would ask you to go ahead and get out whatever camera you brought today, whether it's your smartphone, a DSLR, even a film camera, whatever. <laughs> the information we're going to be covering today applies to everything. And this is part of my innovative planning pathway. I'm skipping slightly ahead so I can knock some of the stuff out. But what I'm hoping we all learn within the next seven minutes is that one, everyone and anyone can be a photographer, especially in this day and age. But two, taking better photos is not that difficult. It just takes a little awareness and a little practice. And if you want to continue practicing and get feedback as you go, you're welcome to post whatever photos you take today and tag my business account on Instagram or Facebook. And I will hop on to the comments and share with you what I think you did well, what you can improve upon. Really, whatever you want to know, I'm here for you to know. But with that, like I said, if this wants to go, there we go. You have more knowledge and technology at your fingertips than some of the greatest photographers of our time. Margaret Brooke White, Dorothea Lang, Ansel Adams. All of these photographers, be they portrait, documentarians, landscape, they had rudimentary equipment and rudimentary information and still created these masterpieces that have withstood the test of time. And really, when you look at these photos, what makes them so compelling is that we layer on different compositional techniques. I'm sure there are other elements, like not everyone is going to climb out onto the skyscraper and hang off of it in order to get their photo, but you don't need to go to extraordinary lengths to get extraordinary photos. You just need to know how to set them up. And that's what we're going to be covering today, is how can you set up your photos and layer them in a way that makes them more interesting, more compelling, and also just tells a better story once, you know, that's all right. Um, thank you. Um, we want to think about what's your story, what's your mission, whether it's your organization, your personal investments, your grandchildren running around in the yard, getting down, say, at their level and seeing what they're seeing and documenting that rather than just, you know, the big scape of the yard and them running by at work. It tells more of that personality and more of the story of that day that you spent with them. So, I'm gonna do things very fast. So feel free to take photos as I'm talking. Uh, I'm gonna walk us through just six compositional techniques and some tips to help our game. I am already guessing I may go over a little bit and I am going to concede to that because I think it's important to explain these clearly and give you a chance to practice them as well while we're in the room. So Feel free to ask your neighbor right now if they are comfortable with you taking their photo because consent is important. <laughs> I do not write photography waivers. Um, maybe I will next week and I'll tell you why later. But some real quick things outside of these technology tips. Um, one, be the zoom. And what I mean by that is whether you have a fixed range camera like mine or you have zoom abilities like on all of your smartphones, Using the zoom distorts the photo. So it is always better for you to actually get up close to your subject in order to take um, or create distance between you. Just avoid using the equipment as much as possible. Clean your lens. Everyone, including me, forgets this every time. So even on your smartphones right now, because they're normally in your purses, in your bags, in your pockets, collecting sweat, collecting dirt, collecting dust, just give them a quick wipe off on something more cloth-like, nothing hard fiber that's gonna scratch your lens. Um, don't amputate limbs. Does anyone know what I mean by that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if I took a picture of you with my one arm up and I angled the camera this way, I could actually use my hand to see, which is <laughs> unfortunate for you because I would not have picked up on that. Oh, what a great picture! So you're now a one-armed person on Facebook. Exactly. 
exactly. And aside from that, just, you know, not being the reality of my situation, it's also slightly confusing to your viewers. If there is some sort of extended action that gets cut off, they will get distracted by that cut off action, no matter how good the rest of the photo is. So keep the arm really tight, or at least inform your subjects to, um, and try not to cut off anything that doesn't make sense. Now, if I were to take a picture of you like this and cut you off at the waist, no one's really gonna get distracted because they can assume she's sitting down. Does that make sense? Um, Cradling the camera with a camera that's like this, not like this. This doesn't give that much stability. This is a world of difference, especially if you're trying to get a moving target. Um, but when it comes to your smartphones, and I saw it next to my iPad, camera, I'm just fixing it. When it comes to cradling your smartphones, instead of holding it like this, just pop your fingers down and try to like walk them into some sort of I can't think of the word for it. Um, another thing is voice your thoughts, especially if you're taking pictures of people as portrait subjects. The more you inform them what you're doing, the more comfortable they are. It could even be something like, hey, I'm just testing for lighting right now. You don't need to worry about posing or smiling. You don't even have to look at me. You can close your eyes, take a breath. Um, but the more you inform them and compliment them at the same time, your eyes are stunning right now. Not that lighting on your hair is just blowing my mind. All of those things give them bits of confidence over time that also you know what you're doing. So then they become more more comfortable. And then finally, which I often forget to do as we're doing now, take a breath. Because especially if you are in the moment running around taking photos, it is so easy to get caught up in those moments. But if you do not breathe, one, you risk missing these other moments when you're recovering. And two, these photos are just shaped here. You just take a breath before any photo. Your body stills, you center yourself, you ask your client to do the same. Everyone's more comfortable. Um, I'm already at red, but we're gonna run through these real quick. Find your light. Natural light is best. However, any light is good. Just know where your source is, angle them appropriately. This sort of lighting is not really flattering on anyone. Thankfully, we have enough right now to where the lights are dispersed pretty evenly in the room. But we've all been in those rooms before where it's like one in the middle, and then it's the very dramatic long cast of shadows that make everything seem longer and more angular. It's not great for anyone. Best is natural light. Best, big open window. Um, windows diffuse light, again, and scatter the particles to make everything even. Um, as you can see here throughout these pages on the far right, if it's too hot on the side of the face, if the photo is too bright, the data is lost. There's no recovering it. If the photo is a little too dark, it can always be pulled up. Create depth. This can be done with your aperture S stop on your camera if you're familiar with those um, things. And if not, that's for later stage. However, Depth of field is just creating depth between the layers of your photos, your foreground, your mid-ground, your background. It's taking a photo like this of Paul while she's out of focus to create some sort of engagement of you are sitting here next to him and can really see what the photography is. You can this. Like this, which is a pretty flat photo, so I just see him. Um, it can be created whether there are mountain ranges in the background or just a bookcase literally a foot away from your subject, but it just looks like the same depth of field here. It's a matter of knowing your equipment and knowing your space. Seating lines. Well, I'm just picking on you because you're my evaluator. <laughs> so a great leading line for Walt right now, if I was to take a picture of him, would be right here, which may not seem extraordinary, especially when the photo is far overexposed and you can't see anything. But with this seating line, you can see me towards the right here. Exactly, and that's the whole point of the lines. It's just meant to draw your eye to what's most important in the photo. You can see in the photo up there, there's a lot of people in that scene, but only one person is making eye contact, and it's the dad, and it's where the eye should be focused. So it might be a photo of the family, but it's really his future photo in this set. Um, so. Did you get permission, Walt? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. 
Thank you, Mom. <laughs> Thank you for reminding me of that. <laughs> that is really important. Um, <coughs> and dividing into thirds, this one can be a little hard to remember in your head, especially if you're not analytically minded, like I am not. But thankfully, smartphones, digital cameras, they all have grid lines that can help you with this. But all it's asking you to do is take your frame and divide it into thirds so that the most interesting parts of your photograph that you want to highlight are either within a quadrant or at an intersecting line at some point. And for me right here, there's a lot going on. One, you can divide this photo up into a bunch of different parts, which is what we're looking at most. There's that statue right there that's perfectly framed at the, um, the city museum. There's that statue, there's her. But really, to me, the most important part was the eye contact. It wasn't even the eyes in the photo. It was the connection between this larger than life statue and this woman, which intersected at the point. Um, and that was because this was at a nonprofit conference and we were visiting the Negro Baseball League Museum. I probably said that wrong. I'm sorry. So sorry. But it was an incredible experience where she was overwhelmed in awe with the weight of those people and the service they give to their communities and how it connects back to her role as a nonprofit professional in her community. So that's what was important to me in that photo. Easiest thing in the world every time. If you ever want your photo to look that much more professional, pick a different angle than just right where you're seeing it. Because everyone roughly sees from the same general eyesight, from like about here to about here. That's not that different for anyone. <laughs> But not everyone will think like an animal. Uh, going with one's eye. One's eye is literally just what you can see down on the ground. And you can come up with new names for these. I do it all the time when I teach kids so that they can investigate them. A dog's eye is about at your knee, which, again, it's not a lot, it's not enough to distort them and make them look like these really warped tall people, but it's enough to be able to give them more depth to the photo. Um, and then bird's eye, you don't have to go in a tree like I do to get bird's eye. That's not <laughs> necessary. And I don't recommend it. It's very dangerous and very terrifying. But honestly, as long as you know where you're generally aiming, this is enough. Or be like me and climb on the furniture. <laughs> um, that is the only time where I have any sort of balance. And then finally, find frames. Framing creates isolation, context, um, it can hide, it can highlight. Again, just like angle, just like any other compositional technique, it is the simplest thing to do. However, you need to be mindful of these narratives that people can create from these sort of photos. I took these both at that same conference. And um, one, this photo, I love this photo. I was so happy when I took this photo. I thought it was such a perfect use of frame, such a great time, like the doors were closing in just a second. And I put it in the final slide deck for um, the closing ceremony. So as soon as it popped up on this giant screen in front of like 300 conference attendees, her table started to laugh hysterically. Because it looked like them. She was very enamored with this one. <laughs> this was just her casually looking up in his direction at the last second. Um, but because of it, it created a humorous, thankfully, but potentially very awkward moment. But seriously, this photo, same conference, uh, baseball leagues museum again, and similar situation, this woman was walking around that field of life-size statues and just overwhelmed with emotion of, especially being a woman of color, that weighs so much heavier on her and their sacrifice not only to um, their community, but her community. It overwhelmed her. I asked her if I could take her picture, and I, as a conference photographer, that was generally accepted no matter what, but kind of a moment of emotion. You want to ask. So she said yes. So I'm like circling her as she was crying, asking her questions about how she's processing. And we get this photo, and it's so powerful. And I wanted to say to so many of course that year, but I didn't. Because this was the year of the Ferguson riots. This was the year of you know, the latest wave of police brutality and um, public response to it. And I knew that in sharing this photo, this woman's story would get lost. And it would become 
you post your photo for all of the social discord that was going on at that time and sort of pulling off this photo, waiting for the right time. And unfortunately, it just keeps not being the right time for it. Um, but in being mindful of the frames you use, you can avoid some very damaging situations in the future. Um, and with that, final piece of advice, and thank you for letting me go over.